All right, we are live. Good evening, everybody. You know, this past Shabbat, I read something that was very incredible. I wanted to share with everybody. It's something with which really, really gives me an idea about how things are running in this world. I mean, you'll never know it for sure. But with this story, I'm sure it'll give you a much better hint as to what's happening behind the scenes. In World War II, there was a group of boys, 24 boys. They were trying to escape, and they tried to get into Italy. Now, these 24 boys that were trying to get into Italy, obviously, they were trying to escape death. But the same way how you have snitches everywhere, during World War II in Italy, there were snitches as well. They got these 24 boys, and they wanted to hand them over to the Gestapo. Now, you know that if somebody tried to run away and you hand them back, their end is very near. So you look at these 24 boys stuck in Italy, about to be sent back to the Gestapo, and the word comes to New York. What are they going to do? How are they going to help these boys? 24 boys that are stuck in Italy. The rabbi at the time, of Aaron Cutler, massive rabbi, huge rabbi in America. He, because of him, many yeshivot are here today. Now, what is this rabbi going to do? He was asking everywhere. His right-hand man, his, his name was Irving Boonim. Irving Boonim looked everywhere. What are we going to do? How are we going to save these boys? And they said they had no other choice except to speak with someone that had pure connections in Italy. And the only guy that had pure connections in Italy, his name was Joe Banona or Bonanno. Now they called him Joe Bananas. This guy was crazy. He was one of the top mob bosses at the time in New York City. Now in New York City, a mob boss is not exactly that just uh, a guy who is so willing to do anything for anybody unless there's a favor involved. So they're wondering, what is it possible? What can we possibly give to this guy, to this Joe Bananas, this godfather, this mafioso? What can we possibly give him that can help us free our boys. But Ravarun Cutler told his right-hand man, listen, Irving, this is not the time. We have to go and speak to him. So they arranged by a hotel, and the name of the hotel was uh, called the Mainstay Hotel. That's where uh, Joe Banana stayed. And they went to this hotel. They sat with him. You're looking at these henchmen of one of the most vile people in New York City, and you look at one of the greatest Gidolei Hadoro, one of the greatest rabbis at the time, sitting with this guy. And this guy's looking at the rabbi. He sees and he can tell this guy's a man of God. For some reason, many of the Italianos within the realm of death and drugs, they had a very soft spot, spot for religion. How it, they mixed it in, it's very hard to tell. But anyways, Rav Aaron Cutler began to speak. He began to talk in Yiddish. He didn't speak the language. His right-hand man spoke the language. And this mafioso boss told the right-hand man, listen, I don't need you to translate. Just let him talk. I want to hear him. So Rav Aaron Cutler spoke to him, to this guy, Joe Bananas, the mafia boss. He spoke to him for about 10 minutes in Yiddish. Now this mafioso has no idea what he's talking about, but he's listening to him. Listening looking at every expression on the face of this great rabbi. At the end, Joe Banana, he tells the, the right-hand man of Rav Aaron Cutler, can you please tell me what he said? And he explains to him that there's 24 boys stuck in Italy. These 24 boys, we can't do anything about it. We need your help. So he's thinking for a second. And he says, listen, tell the rabbi, does he want them by air or does he want them by sea? And Irving couldn't believe it. And he tells the rabbi that. And the rabbi, Rav Aaron Cutler, was shocked. But the guy says, wait one second. Now, oh, here's the catch. This is the catch of the mafia. But it was a very interesting one. He says, I can see that this man is a man of God. Tell him I'll release all 24 of these boys. I will get them extracted from Italy to America if he gives me a blessing. So Rav Aaron Cutler looks at a man in the main stay hotel, this man has everything, everyone under him, pure power, 
pure money. No one can touch him. What beracha do you think he gives such a person? He says, I give you a blessing that for taking out these 24 boys out of Italy, out of harm's way, that you should die a natural death. Not a mita mishuna, not a death out of the ordinary. And very interestingly enough, I think it's Rabbi Yisrael Jungers, he actually, he talked about this and he found in 2002, he found the article about Joe Bananas dying at 97 years old in his home. And you look at the power of the blessing that Rav Aaron Cutler gave to this man. But even more interesting than that is who did these boys find salvation from? How did they get help? They got help from the government? They got help from whom? They got help from a mob boss, which makes a person think, how do you know where your salvation comes? Does it come from the person or from the thing that you know will give you the proper saving? Who do we know? How do we know this? We don't know anything. These past several months that people were up in the air, that people were they had no idea what's going to happen the next day, what's going to happen the next week, what's going to happen the next month, what's going to happen to my kid's school, what's going to happen to my work, what's going to happen to my job, what's going to happen. Nobody knew anything. And as much as people predicted and predicted and predicted and predicted, every prediction was wrong. Every prediction. We don't know anything. We think our salvation comes from one thing. We think we know that in what way God can help. In, not God, but something can help us. But the truth is God is the only one that can help us. There is a way that he does it that we have no idea how it came. How it just showed up. And it proves that he runs the world. You know, this past week on Shabbat, we read Bechukotai. We read a portion in the Torah that talks about the damnations, the, the complete curses, and all the troubles that will befall Israel throughout the generations, which has happened. And there's a very interesting question. That if God tells us all these rebukes, these tochachot, if God tells us that this is what's going to happen, this bad thing's going to happen, that bad thing's going to happen, He writes an entire shopping list. Why is it that the first mitzvah, after this very morbid tone of the parasha, talks about a person who wants to donate his self-worth to the temple? Why is that? Why is that the first mitzvah? You know why? It's because God is telling us one very important factor. You see... When we just read all about this pestilence in the Torah, we read about all these punishments, about this rebuke, about things that will happen. What happens when a person who goes through this moment of quarantine, this moment of difficulty, of unemployment, this moment where a person thinks that all is lost? He believes that there's no value to himself. He believes there's no worth to himself. But God is there to tell you immediately, in the following verse, after this part where it talks about complete eradication of the Jewish people, he says, hold on a second. You still have value. You still sum up for something. And as much as that you believe that you're a nobody, that you're a nothing, and that you make no difference, I'm here to tell you otherwise. The parasha comes with the next mitzvah of arachin, which if somebody comes to the Beit HaMikdash and says, I want to donate my worth, I want to donate who I am, they say, you're worth something. You're going to donate it. Not to think that you're worth nothing. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be unemployed, and they are unemployed, 30 million people. And the biggest problem is not getting them back in jobs. That's not the problem. It's giving them the mindset of what are they worth? What is their value? There's some people that during this pandemic, during this difficulty, what did they do? They saw that there is opportunities, whether if it's to sell masks, whether it is to, 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 to fix the supply chain. But there's some people that they were so, they were so broken, that they were so hit, 
that they said, I'm not working. I give up. What am I supposed to do? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna collect the check. And to them, Hashem is telling you, you're gonna collect the check, collect the check. But don't think that you're worth nothing. And the moment that you collect the check and that you have a little bit extra, invest it. Make something out of it. Make something out of yourself. The moment when it's open, the gates are open. Don't tell yourself, I'm sitting back. The way how we've grown as a Jew is to rely on God. Obviously, with the proper precautions, with the proper realms of how we have to live day to day. But not to say, that's it, I give up. What am I worth? Because the Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination, he feeds on this. He says, who do you think you are? You're nobody. That's it. You're done. Your time is over. Your, indus- your industry's up. You can't do this. You can't get up. You can't pick yourself up. And then you, when you listen to the experts, to the professionals, to the doctors that know everything, what, do we, what did we read in the Aftara? Only in God you trust. They are not the end all. They are not what who calls what's going to happen. It is Hashem that calls that. Hashem says that you have a value, you have a worth. You don't give up. You don't just put in the towel. You get up and you find a way. And for some people, this way, as painful as it is, may turn out to be something even greater in terms of independence, in terms of finding who they are. Because always in the times of trying, that's when someone finds their true strength. So let us remember the rabbi that out of all, every possible scenario that he found a way and that was through the most unlikely contact that was a mafioso and the reason why that mafioso was sent because god is telling you it's not through what you believe it's through how i want it to be done we have to be able to make it happen and the only way we can make it happen is if we understand what is our worth what can we do with ourselves? What are we capable of? But the only way you could find out your capabilities is to know that you are capable. There was a great motivational point. One speaker came out in front of everyone. He held the $20 bill. And he says, does anybody want this? Everyone raised their hand. He took the $20 bill. He crushed it. And he says, does anybody want this crushed 20? Everybody raised their hand. He took the $20 bill. He threw it on the floor. He stamped on it. And he says, does anybody want this $20 bill? Everyone raised their hand. He picked up the $20 bill. He flattened it out. And he said, this 20 is you. You might be crushed. You might be crumpled. You might be in a moment where you can say that this is it. This is over. But at the end of the day, you still have value. You're still wanted. You're still needed. And you can still make a difference. Don't sell yourself short. There's a big light ahead of the tunnel. And there's a lot to do. And we need you in order to do it. Have a great night.